Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part four for this news report today. And I'm ready to go. All right, so we have US unemployment rate falls with more adults discouraged or quit looking. The economy added 146,000 jabs in November up from 138,000 in October. I noticed that the mainstream media is touting that as a huge success and a, and a reason to be optimistic about the, about the future. So the unemployment rate fell to 7.7%, largely because 542,000 additional adults chose not to look for work. It actually uh, says it's the worst recovery since the Great Depression. 73% of the new jobs created in the last five months were in government. 73% of new civilian jobs created in the U.S. over the last five months were in government, according to official data published by the Bureau of Labor. Then from good jobs to bad jobs to no jobs, the tragic downfall of the American worker says there was a time in America when virtually anyone that wanted a job could go out and get one. And the U.S. boasts the largest and most prosperous middle class in history of the world. Sadly, those days are long gone as Back in 1969, 95% of all men between the ages of 25 and 54 had a job, but now there are millions of Americans in their prime working years that cannot find work. It says millions of others are working for low-wage jobs or part-time uh, jobs because this is all they can get. Good example is what the writer says the other day. Went to a retail store, got in conversation with a lady that was checking him out. Uh, says a cashier, she said that she had been working professional jobs all of her life and that she had taken this job to tide her over as she searched for a new job, but she's now been there for two years with no end in sight. But this is the new reality. Good-paying manufacturing and professional jobs are being replaced by low-paying service jobs. Of course, the new bill, a uh, health bill, health insurance bill that forces you to um, basically pay for private insurance. Health insurance is going to force businesses, small businesses, all over the U.S. to minimize the number of full-time workers they're using and replace them with part-time workers. Something to note is that um, it's a good indicator that this is coming around, that they're forcing you to get uh, this eugenics care because what? Maybe they know something that we don't. Either A, the eugenics is going to start taking hold, um, so they need, uh, quote, health care, or B, they just need to kill off a bunch of people by a certain time. So they're going to force you to get this uh, health care, and eventually you'll be forced to do checkups in order to get a job. you got to do that. And So I'll leave off with this. There's more than 75% of all jobs in the U.S. today are not good jobs, and things are not looking promising for the future. So it's no wonder that so many families are barely surviving these days. And right now, approximately 77% of all Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, at least some of the time. And 53% of all Americans with a bachelor's degree under the age of 25 were either unemployed or underdeployed during 2011. But we need lots more immigrants, says A. Barton Hinkle. He thinks hardworking newcomers are good for America. So you must have listened to Bush, who said that um, about, uh, what was he speaking on uh, uh, immigrants, as something about they shine his soul or something like that. And it's nothing against immigrants, it's just like, what about the people, the citizens here that you force to pay taxes and stuff like that? Well, they can't pay taxes if they don't have jobs. Okay, so let's get uh, let's get illegal immigrants who don't pay taxes. And that's why neocons always act, to act as if they're conservatives and stuff like that, and they play that whole game um, and why they're on board with this, because they like cheap labor and they don't like to pay for benefits or anything like that, which is fine and everything, but... I'm just tired of hearing that uh, the crappy ass excuse about well, there's there's a jobs that Americans don't want. Well, there's Americans that want them, they just can't get them because they, along with their employer, will go to jail if they uh, pay them below minimum wage and they don't pay their uh, Social Security, Medicare, and all those taxes. Compared with native-born Americans, immigrants are more likely to start a business, more likely to work, and less likely to commit a crime. They say. Uh, taxes eats into 70% of UK families' income. A new studies found that. The families in Britain pay some of the highest tax rates in the developed world compared to other nations like Ireland, Canada, and Chile. So, yeah, they steal half your income, uh, and, but you're rich, right? And then big corporations, they still always like to say that they pay taxes, but most of the time that they don't. And they get co corporate welfare, which is basically subsidies and tax breaks. So for you living in uh, rich nations, as you're called by Bankai Moon, um, they want you to pay another tax, the carbon tax, to save the planet from uh, spraying of chemtrails and aerosols. That modifies the weather. It says here that uh, British households with two children and one earner are paying around 73% of their income into tax, which is made mostly of income tax. 
which is really just a it, it's really a tax um how how can i put it it's basically a tax that goes towards the interest to the federal reserve system so that you can use your money show this to anyone that believes that taxes are too low it says politicians love to find ways that they can raise revenue without us feeling it most people just focus on income tax rates and they forget about the dozens of other ways that they're bleeding us dry it's really kind of like the death by a thousand cuts, and of course the middle class gets hit the hardest. The poor are exempt from any taxes. The ultra-wealthy are masters at cheating the system and avoiding taxes. And so the most pain is always felt by those in the middle. Hard-working middle class families and small businesses all over America are being financially raped by this insidious system. You have building permit taxes, capital gains taxes, cigarette tax, court fine, indirect tax dog license taxes, driver license fees, federal employment taxes, fishing taxes, food taxes, gasoline taxes, gift taxes, hunting license taxes, inheritance taxes, all kinds of taxes, of course, luxury taxes, liquor taxes, recreational vehicle tax, property tax, toll booth tax, sales tax, self-employment tax, school tax, it says here, septic permit taxes, social security taxes, attaining tax, telephone tax, tire tax, utility tax, workers' compensation tax. When you account all these forms of taxation, which they didn't even include all of them, there are some Americans that play by the rules that are sending more than half of their incomes to the government. This is why tax avoidance has become a multi-billion dollar industry in the United States. People are sick and tired of being drained by a system that is way too complicated and way too unfair. I think um, there was that actor Lovitz, uh, John Lovitz, that was talking about Obama, saying, you know, there's going to be change and uh, pull your weight. And he's like, uh, dude, he's like, dude, they took half my taxes last year. And he's basically telling Obama to F off. Another person, I guess, that told the federal government to F off was Stephen Baldwin. Many of you have probably seen this. This is a uh, charge with tax evasion, saying that he owes 350,000 clams. And uh, they like to do this where they, you know, Wesley Snipes and stuff like that, where um, they, you know, and he fled the country and stuff like that. I mean, they really put a lot of pressure on people and push them to the edge uh, where they either kill themselves or, you know, they uh, they can't pay it. <laughs> I, I, guess, I don't know what else to say. And or they try to flee. And uh, so, yeah, I guess they're saying that $350,000 for the year 2008, 2010. So two years, $350,000 of taxes. And they like to put these celebrities out there every, every once in a while, especially towards the end of the year where tax season's coming up to make you feel as if you got to do your patriotic duty to pay uh, into the Federal Reserve System, pay them for being able to uh, manipulate your currency and stuff like that, like that and your interest rate, basically your entire economy. And uh, you're supposed to feel good about it because, see, the celebrities, see, they cracked down on the celebrities, the big millionaires. But I thought about it. I'm like, well, let's see. If two years, $350,000, that's a, a little under. It's 175000 uh, per year, so almost 200000 So that means if they take about half of it, that means he only made about $500,000 $500, a year. And you say, oh, that's it? That's it, Darko? And it's like, well, dude... <laughs> Uh, you know, like I said before, I, I don't hate millionaires, and it, it's the billionaires and trillionaires that are ruining this, ruining this world, this society right now, that are bleeding people dry. It's not people that have a half a thousand, a half a million dollars, or that are, have a net operating income of a million dollars a year. You know, that's pennies compared to the people that run countries. I mean, he, he, the EU isn't the EU. Germany isn't Germany. It's the Rothschilds' own country. They have their own countries, like Israel, like the United States. Or corporations owned privately. So he says he could face up to four years in prison. This is the Baldwin who declared bankruptcy in 2009. Next up, Speaker Boehner hints he could accept higher tax rates. Remember, I'm not going to raise taxes. So he's hinting at accepting higher tax rates. Medicare, I know, of course, they'll say it'll be on the rich. Well, actually, it'll be on those millionaires, like I said, not the super rich, but they'll say the top 1%. I don't know. We'll see, right? We'll see. Medicare emerging as prime target in the fiscal cliff talk. So and it's like, blah, 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 you know, why are you even covering this, right? But it's actually pretty interesting what they're going to do about the spending cut. And it's queer because I like to play those games, again, to make you feel guilty because they call them entitlement programs. Ooh, you entitlements. I noticed that in the Mail Online, they were really big about that. Oh, a pensioner, a pensioner. It's a person that worked their fucking ass off their entire lives and are now finally uh, able to retire and getting something back for paying into it. And they call them pensioners like they're, like they're objects or something like that, like they're parasites. 
Uh, so entitlements, again, something that you paid into. You didn't have any choice. You were forced by gunpoint to pay into this system. So when you get it, ooh, you're entitled. Well, actually, you're entire, entitled to less now, right? So actually, uh, what they're going to do now is they're going to reduce payments. They're going to reduce the payments for hospitals. So they're going to turn you away, like they're already doing UK, euthanizing these, quote, pensioners and elderly to cut uh, savings. So, uh, yeah, basically to cut costs. Uh, nursing homes, they're going to reduce payments for nursing homes. So you just go ahead and die off there. Uh, drug makers and um, insurers and physicians, which means most of the qualified doctors will leave the country, which they've already been doing in mass. Um, so it's here that... Um, that they're going to actually raise the Medicare eligibility from 65 to 67, just like how they're making you work longer and harder for less. And in fact, they actually in the UK, they were actually saying that people that were retired and pensioners, uh, they could actually work off their pension, so they can still they're still going to have to work possibly uh, to receive their pension that they already paid into. <laughs> the games that they play, the mind games with people, they make them feel guilty. We got two more six stories. I think they're both coming out of the UK. It says it's revealed that rule changes. Uh, will force the sick to work for free. Tens of thousands of sick and disabled people in Scotland, yes, in the UK, face being forced onto unpaid work programs under the threat of losing their uh, benefits. And then you have this story, this uh, in England, Tory hatchet man, lame Duncan Smith's weasel-worded letter to a boy who said Atto's test killed his dad. So it goes on here, says that the cold reply by the pension secretary told a 13-year-old to visit the job center to find out about his dad's disability appeal. Says here they told him that he was fit to work, and they basically went in there and made him do this test, and said the boy said the strain of the back-to-work test killed uh, his disabled dad. It goes on, it says that um, there's a records campaign for a fair system that protects disabled people. Uh, after this individual wrote a letter insisting his dad was hounded to death when he was assessed fit for work by Atos, the firm used by Duncan Smith's Department for Work and Pensions. So the guy wrote a letter to the kid, but it says the letter is a machine printed on a DW paper with the only sign of humanity, an eligible scrawl, presumably Duncan Smith's signature. There it is right there. Again, more games that they're playing. Proposal to drug test welfare recipients may gain steam in Kansas. Again, sounds practical, just like everything else. You know, why? You know, it's like, um, well, let's see. The problem I have with this is that there's a lot of people that may have uh, issues that um, that don't want to go to the pharma, big pharma. They don't want to start popping pills. Well, see, they're not going to test for those types of drugs. They're going to test for things, the most used drug, which is marijuana, which helps treat thousands of ailments it's known by scientists and uh, they're going to go after those people but it's amazing you know it's like i always kind of just laugh to myself when i'm in the grocery store and i could see you know this uh the pharmacy in the in the store you know in the supermarket and i'm like wow you know they could just operate right in the open they're dealing drugs and they just operate out in the open nothing happens but if you want to buy some pot you got to go in a back alley in a dark dark night and stuff like that in a dimly lit alley and hope you don't get sh shaken down by the uh, revenue collectors, the, the cops. And Kearney students suspended for painting flag on bare chest for school videos. The senior was suspended Thursday after he and two friends painted their bare chest to resemble an American flag for school music video. So, But they said that it had to do with them being bare chested and that violated the dress code. <laughs> it's so funny too because you see all these young girls that wear these tight ass clothes and skirts, short skirts, and they're basically dressed like a sluts that are about to start scaling the pole at a strip bar, strip club, but they don't mind that. They're not really leaving much for imagination these days. Um, you know, I mean, they're pretty close to just being naked already. High school song policy gets changed. So West Virginia High School will no longer uh, require students to stand during Friday morning pledges and songs. I don't know why they have the picture of this elementary school, but the policy now calls for students to stand or sit silently as the U.S. National Anthem and Pledge of Allegiance and song lift every voice and sing is played over the school public address system. The biggest thing to, to, to look at here is this uh, forcing students to stand for the song, which some regard as the African American National Anthem. I guess that's lift every voice and song upset at least two students and one uh, student's mother it says uh, Kim Bailey whose son chose not to stand was sent to the office several times for his decision saying I still think they need to stress the fact that there's only one national anthem but uh, like I said you put the, your children in these re-education camps you're just asking for uh, for trouble and mister says lessons on porn are acceptable 
Uh, parents of a student that have strip search are going to sue. Thank you.